In this video, I'm going to explain how exceptions work in Java. We're going to use as our example this division program, which is really quite straightforward. First, we're going to ask the user to enter two integers, and then we're going to read those two integers, divide num1 by num2, storing the answer in ants, and then outputting the value that is stored. Very straightforward, but there are potentially some problems. Initially, we might consider running this program, and when we're prompted to enter two integers, we enter, let's say, 4 and 3, which are read in, give us the answer 1, which is correct because we're performing an integer division, and think, great, the program works. But of course, the beauty of testing is that you can try and break the program. And so, if we were to run it again, this time using the first value of 4.1 and 3, and then run, we get something that looks rather disturbing from the user's point of view. In the report, we have the name of the exception, input mismatch exception. And as we look down this list, we find our first occurrence of our program in the list tells us that the error occurred on line 9. Line 9 is the next int. So we have learned that if next int does not receive an integer value, it will throw what is called an input mismatch exception. And that means that these two lines could cause us a problem. So we make a note of the name of that exception, input mismatch exception. Now if we run the program again and say, OK, I will enter two integers, a 4 and a 0. At least lines 9 and 10 will be happy because these are two integer values. But when we execute it, we again get a problem. This time, we have what's called an arithmetic exception. And the message is that we're trying to divide by 0, and that it occurs in our program at line 11. Therefore, this line also potentially could cause a problem if the second number is a 0. Now, of course, we could try putting an if statement before line 11. But the beauty of exceptions is that they only cut in if and when the problem arises. Whereas if we were to use an if statement, such as if num2 equals 0, then output an error message, else we'll go on and perform the calculation. That is somewhat inefficient, because even with correct information, the second number being not 0, that test would still be performed. So if we can use exceptions, it would be a much better option. The first thing we will need to do then is to put the code that could potentially cause us a problem inside a try block. So we're going to try to execute these statements, knowing that potentially there will be a problem. The first exception that we noted was the input mismatch exception. So we can put a catch block after the try block, and the parameter for that catch block is the name of the exception that we want to trap and handle. And within the block, we're going to put the statements that will be executed if and when the error occurs. As we work our way through the code, let's assume that this statement is correct and the input is correct. So we have, say, the value 3. And then when it comes to perform the second input for an integer, the value is not an integer. That will cause an exception to occur. The exception is thrown, which means that this block is immediately abandoned. And we start looking for a catch block to handle the input mismatch exception. And of course, we've got one here. And therefore, this code will be executed. Now, if we run this again and we enter two integers, 3 and 5.6, hit Enter. Now we get a message here, java.util.inputMismatchException. That is the result of calling the toString method for this exception parameter and is only in there really just to illustrate the concept. And the second line that is output, wrong type of input, of course, comes from here. We had a second potential problem, dividing by zero, getting an arithmetic exception. So we could also put in a catch block for the arithmetic exception. So for the one try block, we now have got two catch blocks. If there is no problem with the input, then of course the catch block for input mismatch exception will never be executed. On the other hand, if we input a 0 for the second value and then attempt to do the division, that will cause the arithmetic exception to be thrown and the try block is immediately abandoned. The first catch block is tested to see if its parameter matches 
the exception that's been thrown. Well, we're looking for arithmetic exception, and therefore this one doesn't match. So this catch block is ignored, and the next catch block is tested, and the parameter matches what has been thrown, and therefore this is the catch block that is executed. We'll run the program again to illustrate the problem. So 4 divide by 0, and now the catch block handled the exception in a way that is much more pleasing from the user's point of view. So exceptions are an efficient way of dealing with errors. Because if the try block executes with no exception being thrown at all, then these statements are ignored. And we haven't had to perform any if statements to test for potential problems. We just deal with the errors as they occur. If, on the other hand, an error does occur and is detected within the try block, the exception is thrown and then we can start processing that exception by looking for matching catch blocks. Ideally, we want to catch every potential exception. And sometimes we might not necessarily predict every kind of exception that could be thrown. And so we could have a catch all, which is a catch block that takes as its parameter exception. And therefore, whatever the exception type, it will always, if these two don't match, will always be caught here and handled here. Now that means that this would equally well handle an input mismatch exception and an arithmetic exception. Therefore, we have to ask, well, what happens when one of these is thrown, since this matches and that matches? And the answer is quite straightforward. As we work our way top to bottom through the catch blocks, looking for a matching parameter. first one that matches is the one that will be executed. So if we get an input mismatch exception being thrown here, and that is the first one that we test, therefore that's the one that will handle the exception. And having processed this catch block, all the others are ignored. And that's how an exception is handled.